travel days are stressful days. We're here at our boondocking spot. <laughs> Sorry what I said during our backup process. He never listens to me! Whoa, 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 what are you doing? Break checking me. It's amazing the conversations that pop up around the campfire. It does. <laughs> it looks like a frog in a tree. Are you Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Hello. So, <laughs> you're only seeing me or Sandra mm -hmm. because, or here, no, she's gonna be on this side. Because we're- He doesn't know where I am. I, I really don't. I'm in front of him. Yeah. He's right there. So we are, for various and sundry reasons, Sandra's in the chase car. Yeah. We used to call that driving separately, mm -hmm. but I guess the current term is chase car. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we still don't like it. No, and we don't like driving separately. We don't like him chasing me or me chasing him, but. Well, no, at least not on the road in the car. No, 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 no. no. no we won't go into that though, the other one. Yeah, he's been chasing me for 35 years. <laughs> And we have our headsets on, so we can at least communicate most of the time. And it has a pretty good range, actually. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we always like uh, driving together. Uh, mm -hmm. You can share the experience on the journey on wherever you're going. Yeah, because for us it is about the journey and sharing the journey together. Yeah, exactly. And you really can't do that driving separately. No, and she can't take any pictures driving. I know. <laughs> so we are heading west mm -hmm. and south and south we're gonna we're not sure where we're gonna end up or we know where we're gonna get to we know the end point we're just not sure where we're gonna go in between it's gonna take us a few weeks and we're hoping that you guys want to come along and see what's going on you know, David pulled me out of bed way too early in the morning. I should brake check his little hiney. You know, I think I am. Whoa, 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 what are you doing? Brake checking me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well don't drag me out of bed next time and make me drive chase with you. Man, I don't know, what was she doing uh, back there doing that? Break checking me. I'm gonna have to have a talk with that woman. We made it. That was a grueling 12 miles. It might have been 15 because <laughs> we did take the long way. Yeah. So we're here at our boondocking spot mm -hmm. and we're gonna, well, we're gonna park. Yes, we need to do that. Yeah, because we're gonna be here for a few yeah. days. But so we just came from the rally and a lot of people were asking, what is your process? How do you guys park? Without so, like killing one another. Right. So we thought that we're going to record the whole process and share it with you. Yeah. And hopefully not run into a tree or anything while we're doing that and being distracted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's called distracted YouTubing. <laughs> so let's get going. So. At the rally that was last week, we had, yeah, a lot of people were coming up to us because they watched the videos and, and they, they say, man, your backing up is pretty smooth. Especially after that one in Oregon coast at the Thousand Trails. <laughs> yeah. That's and that, pretty impressive. Th that was. That was pretty tight. You know, and it's, it's so funny. We laugh because we, we get asked this a lot. And I just, I always chuckle because I always think about these t-shirts, these you know, that, that people have that says, 
um, um, it says, you know, sorry what I said during our backup process. Yeah, because some women say, he never listens to me. And it's just, it's hilarious uh, because it can be a lot smoother. I mean, I mean, we've heard a lot of things like, uh, you know, people come to us going like, like, you know, I'm going to just kill her, you know, and I'm thinking, okay, it's a little dramatic and, you know, you don't yeah. want to go that far. So for us, so for a lot of people, travel days are stressful days because of just backing into a site. Um, but for us, it's a game. It is. You know, how can we get it in right the first time? David will get out and look and kind of do a quick survey. And then we get out, once we actually get to the spot, you will both get out and we'll, you gotta have a game plan. Yeah, you gotta decide, you know, the orientation, if you have that selection and that choice. Yeah. And then you've gotta look and see, you know, is it, uh, is the ground firm? Does it roll? Is there a hump? So this looks level, pretty kinda. firm, relatively level. You can jump up and down and check it uh, out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, this is solid. Oh, yeah. Oh. All right. So we've got. We're gonna hit this if we get too close, and we've got that power line, but we should miss it. Yeah. We don't want to get too close to the trees. So really, I think. Yeah. And it's, there's a slight hump right here, so, and then I don't, that might have been an old tree right there, so we want to miss that. Yeah. So I think if we just bring, yeah, bring it in right here. Yeah, I think and, so. And, you know, where are the trees, where are the rocks, where are the stumps, where are the dips? Yeah, so, so it's really good. And then also when we're backing in, if there's some blind spots, you'll have me, when you're starting to back in, if you can't necessarily see where you need to turn, I'll let David know, okay, you need to start turning. Ready to roll. Rock and roll. Yep. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna back up just a little bit, kind of. All right, then I'll watch the trees up ahead here. So you're gonna cut into it pretty good. Well, I mean, I'm, yeah, I, mean, I just don't want to scrape Right it. where the slopey um, road is and we're gonna tip over. <laughs> we're not gonna tip over. But it's yeah. communication. Yeah. No, that's the key. And we have several modes of communication. Um, if we're getting into a really tight spot, we put the headsets on. Yes. Um, so we really didn't need the headsets for this because it was pretty easy and straightforward. Yeah, and I never lost sight of Sandra. Yeah. You know, she was always, there was never always really a, a blind spot. Have contact. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, um, because you just don't know. I might have fallen over or something and twisted my ankle and you could have just run right over me. That's true. Hey, <laughs> and speaking of which, um, so in an HDT, it does draw some attention and whenever we're in a campground just, or just something, um, people will come up and start asking questions and, and we'll, we'll be more than happy to answer them. But um, you do need to stay focused and you need to stay focused on each other. Um, the other thing we do <laughs> are hand signals. And I, I, I never understood this. You know, when, when people are doing this and helping you back in, or one person's doing this, or doing, like, what does this mean? Does it mean left, right? And when you're like 10 feet behind the trailer and you're 70 something feet long, that's 80 feet. As the driver, you can't see this. Yeah. You can't see this. If Sandra's doing this, then I'm thinking like, she says, you're crazy. Yes. Let's leave. I do that a lot behind <laughs> his back, but anyhow, so what in, in all the air travel that, that we've done, the thing that I've learned from air traffic from the air ground crew is big hand signals. We big. always, even if I don't need to, I'm always using big hand signals, back up, go left, go right, um, you know, stop, go forward. And then also as he's approaching his stop, I'll start like this and very slowly at the same pace that he's going until he needs to stop and then he knows, okay, he better stop. And if I did really good, then she'll do something like, yay! <laughs> so that's pretty much it, but that, that communication. Is. Communication's key and yeah. being on the same page on where you That's wanna be so and how you wanna get in there. Yes, yeah. very critical. Yeah. So hope this helped. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we're in, we got to put the jacks down and, and yeah, disconnect. Settled. Now we do get asked sometimes by people, why do we disconnect so much if we're just going to be there for a day or two? First off, disconnecting is not that big of a deal. It's pretty yeah. easy. Uh, secondly, it, it creates more of a rock solid foundation for us being inside our home. Mm -hmm. And thirdly is we want to be level because when we pull those slides out, we want to be level so that the slides don't have any undue pressure yeah. and stress on them at all. We, right. They're designed to come out on a, on a level surface yeah. and that's what we want to provide for them. Yeah. yeah. So We want to be good to our slides because yeah. they'll be good to us. <laughs> All what right. time did you say it was? It was 12.43 when we got back into the truck. No wonder I'm hungry. What do you want for lunch? What? Uh, what? what? You, now you're talking about lunch? Yeah, you're almost there. Are you, are you kidding me? I'm like focused and you're like talking about lunch. Why do you always stress out about deciding what to have for dinner uh, or lunch? Because that's like a lot of pressure, you know? You, it's a one meal a day on lunch. You know, you got to get it right. So we're we're here. Mm -hmm. We're going to be here for a few days. And I think we need to get set up now. Yes, I'm hungry. Let's do it. For the next few days, our walk on the uh, farm up to where everyone is staying. An evening on the farm is always special. Sights and sounds of trees and pasture, farm equipment in the distance. It's always a nice time. Ah! Ah! Man! Where from? <laughs> they well, have already cut it. It has. And instead of corn, it's Milo, and they just, just like whack the heads off. Oh, I know. Man. Oh. Man, that was so cool last year. We, we don't actually ever put old stuff up there again. No. On the channel, but. You know, we need to. <laughs> we do. I. We So we miss this, I guess, by. Probably about a couple of weeks from the looks of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put up uh, on the, the video here what we missed and what you guys would thus miss since we missed it this week uh, on them cutting silage.
So last night was a nice campfire over at Hog Heaven Resort. Yeah. And it's amazing the conversations that pop up around the campfire. It does. So we're on a family reunion. We're here for my mom's 85th birthday. And so all the cousins and everybody have come in from all over, from Canada, Colorado, uh, Tennessee. Everywhere. Uh, everywhere. And um, so it's quite a diverse group of people. Yeah, we were talking around the campfire last night, and it's just... It's uh, hilarious, some of the things that have gone on. <laughs> on the farm. On the farm. At the Hog Trough Cafe, and we've got to start CPR, this man that just fell. He'll be a lead CPR. All right. Start your engine. <laughs> okay. So we have been from Yellowstone to the Arctic and out to like Palm Springs and down to Tucson in search of an otter. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, they're not in any of those places. Here in Kansas, in, in Hutchinson, Kansas. Kansas, they say they have otters here at the zoo. Well, we're gonna, I'm gonna try it. We're Check gonna it out. Find out. Ten years we've been coming to Hutchinson, Kansas. Why what these things are? And we did not know about the zoo. I mean, they've got a railroad, they've got a nice sign, and really up until, what, yeah, this year or last year, we just found out about the zoo. This will be a visit today because we have some time. We're gonna find an otter. Yes. Okay, we need to go look at the otters first and then we can just go do the other stuff. <laughs> well, that might be the only thing. In search of otters. I got a map? <laughs> you know where that's going. Oh, there's no doubt about that. Oh, I know. Man, that. where are the otters? The dino dig? No. no, I don't think there's any otters over there. There's water. <gasps> How close are they? They said there's three of them. Oh, there oh. they are. There he is. Oh. <laughs> he is playing you, hard you, to get. You had to turn on the camera. <laughs> There he is. He's peeking his little <laughs> nose up cute there. Little thing. What do you hear? You? Huh? A lot of stuff going on. <gasps> you hear that? Back in the water. There he goes. I wonder if they'll let me adopt him. Because some zoos you can adopt animals. That's true. I think this is as close to an otter as I've ever gotten. <laughs> That's probably true. This is what, the closest? Yes, closest we've been to a pronghorn. Yeah. I mean, we see thousands of them in Wyoming and Montana. Montana.
So we're leaving the otter, but not for good. We are in search of the next one on Sandra's list that she likes, the beaver. How cool was the our, our unofficial beaver, beaver experience. experience? Oh, how beautiful. Wow. What do you think? Look at you. You're broccoli. So cute. Oh, that's my kind of animal. We love broccoli. We could take you home with us. So those two, Nora, I believe, is around five, and then Stump is six. Uh -huh. And then the baby. You guys can hang out here. I'll go in. Oh, oh okay. okay. Hi. I don't have any broccoli for you. So sometimes in a small zoo. Oh, I just so you want to touch get, you. Uh, sometimes Hi. special treatment when they're in maintenance. Hi. You dig under the ground, and how they have to get to it is underwater. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had a beaver in their house. So <laughs> basically, because of how friendly and imprinted he is, uh, he is unreleasable. So when an animal through rehab is unreleasable, we basically will find them um, homes. Beavers part exhibit because they're very destructive. Mm -hmm. um, you have to almost have all metal, as you see, metal, metal, yeah. metal. Um, if you have any wood or plastic, they chew right through it. Oh, yeah. Um, I know not to stick my finger in there. Can I touch mm -hmm. your paw? Can I touch his paw? You touch his paw. Put your paw in there. I want to touch your paw. Oh. Oh. Hi there. You? How are you doing? That was neat. And she, Jasmine was so nice. So that's the nice thing about being in, coming to some of the smaller zoos is you get that personal experience because they're not so busy and so big. Yeah. And so Today's volunteer day, mm -hmm. and they were organizing the volunteers to decorate. Yeah. And we asked uh, one of the people that work here uh, where the beavers were. They're cleaning yeah. out the pool, and they said, Well, if you're interested in beavers, <laughs> let's uh, see if we can get uh, that taken care of. So, yeah. very impromptu beaver mm -hmm. experience, but wow. But when we come back to Hutch, so cool. we're going we're gonna to go. I think you have to book it two weeks in advance. And then I think there's a lot of considerations for that. So, yeah, um, yeah we're definitely going to next time. <laughs> yeah, book the otter experience. Yes, I definitely want to do that. Yeah, but that was very cool. Man, those yeah. beavers, they're huge. They're huge. So, so cool. cool. Done with the zoo. Mm -hmm. it, that's a neat little zoo. It's cute. Yeah. And they have otters and beavers. All right, so given that they had otters, and that we got that little sort of impromptu beaver experience. Yeah. What was your favorite animal here? Oh, the beavers were really cute. Beavers were the really beavers cute. beavers were cute. Man. <laughs> and I got to touch one. Yeah, the fur is very soft. Yeah. And they're huge. Huge. I mean, huge. So beavers went out because of the experience i think so yeah yeah but it was the otters were cute here they were so Very when neat. we come back i want to do both experiences yeah we'll do both so all right lunch time lunch i'm hungry yeah and then uh, a few more errands and then we're heading back to the farm all right so what uh what well, is this so i thought <laughs> <laughs> So this is the original salt mine, mine shaft. shaft. Are you ready for it? Yeah, let's let's hit it. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's the original salt well, mine shaft. Well, it says the original well. That's the birthplace of Stratica. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, that's kind of cool to see the origin of it, I guess. But yeah. Oh, and I guess that's a real salt chunk. Chunk. Yeah, the salt block. Yeah. So we've done this. Um, there's a huge, huge salt mine, not like Morton beverage salt, but or food salt, but 
there's this huge salt mine just, I don't know, a couple miles down the road. And it's really, really cool because they, um, they mine the salt. And it's also, they say, museum because that's where a lot of Hollywood artifacts are being stored is down in the salt mine. Oh, that's um, right. Yeah. So we visited that, gosh, five or six years ago. Oh, yeah. That was a cool it, it tour. It was really neat. We may have to go back, but um, we've not been to the original site. So we thought, well, we're driving by. We might as well see it. And, that, and this is it. And that's it. It was still funny, the yeah. original well. It was. <laughs> right, sounds good. Uh-huh. Let's get home. Yes. And the green lights are all oh, flashing. Yeah, all right, so all. that's good. Now, I'm getting nervous already. that's okay, it's okay. <laughs> uh, it's like, yeah, yeah, okay. You're not going to do the pre-flight check, the walk around, and check the kick the tires? <laughs> and... No. Make sure all the lug nuts, no rust on the rim. And... That where it says take off. Yeah. So if you, you press that, we'll want to stand back a little bit. Now. Stand back! Yeah. Clear! So, um, press that and then it'll circle with a green. Okay, I saw a green go around. Yeah, you'll need to hold on to it though. Just keep pressing it. There you go. Here we go. It's okay. I'm still here. That way, Alright, so what you're going to do is this. <laughs> it looks like a frog in a tree. <laughs> That's good, it didn't fall down. <laughs> so next time, you I guess you're wondering why I'm blowing underneath the slides. Look, we're out on the farm. We're getting ready to leave today. Sondra calls this farm camping, which it is. But there's moths in Kansas. They love the wheat. And they tend to like to try to, you know, get up underneath where it's not windy and not real cold. And that's our slides out here. So I'm just making sure there's none in there because last time, we had an infestation when we were at the golf course in Goodland, Kansas. It took us, I don't know, weeks, months to get rid of all those moths. So, and they call them something else, wheat moths or something. So I'm blowing them, try to get them out, try, try to be a little proactive as we leave the farm. I use 
Lose my witchcraft. Ooh. 